uh, here yesterday morning after the mass um, we there was a priest here at the back of the church and he knew brother Gregory here uh, the man was staying in the hotel the priest was staying in the hotel across the road to Fitzwilton and he was there with uh, with a group of uh, tourist pilgrims that had come from Florida uh, the exact parish where our sisters and our brothers and priests are residing and it was kind of a, a coincidence that he came in here and he saw us he doesn't know me personally he knows brother Greg uh, so it was just one of those meetings um, like providential meetings and so we were asking about our brothers and our sisters and how are they going and so he was telling us and and so he gave us what you could call then a, a second hand witness to how they are going on um, tomorrow we will actually be in conversation with our brothers through one of those internet hangout things uh, online meetings so we'll see one another and they will speak to us themselves of how their life is going on and what they're doing, what they're up to. That would be a first-hand witness. Uh, so why am I talking about that? Well, that theme of witness and being a first-hand witness uh, actually is, is part of the, the readings of today. The, the apostles, after the resurrection, and seeing Jesus firsthand, they themselves are firsthand witnesses to the truth that Jesus' his life is greater than death, and his love for them is greater than the failures and the miseries and the sins. So they are firsthand witnesses to the victory of God over death and sin, and that. He communicates that new life to them, that new life which they are called to go out and give witness to. And precisely by giving that witness to that new life, they, because they are first-hand witnesses, they see it for themselves, they know it intimately, it is stronger than anything within them that, is, that could hold them back, let's say, fear, fear of death. In fact, the giving testimony today uh, looking death in the face because it comes out that those the, the, the priest, the cast, the, the Sanhedrin listening to them give witness to it's because it's, uh, they said to him, to them uh, think, for, think of it yourselves, is it right first to obey God, then to obey men uh, and they're telling them to stop preaching but they know that God through Jesus Christ has asked them to preach this new way of life so that's what they're doing, even if those, these people are against it and they want to kill them, that's what it actually says. So the apostles, because they are first-hand witnesses, are strengthened by that very fact to give witness to this new life, a life that is stronger than death, the resurrection. And in the gospel, uh, we are listening to the witness of John the Baptist, who also personally knew Jesus Christ himself. But Jesus is the man whom the Spirit is given without reserve. The Jews knew that uh, in the past the prophets received a part of the Spirit to proclaim the Word of God. But Jesus, here he says, is given the Spirit without reserve. Uh, now, they knew that the Spirit had two functions. One was to communicate divine truth. And the second was to enable those people who received that revelation to be able to understand and rec to recognize it and understand it. And Jesus had been given it without reserve. That means that what Jesus speaks is the word of God itself because it's the Holy Spirit that is speaking fully through him. Um, so that witness that the apostles gave to Jesus, who is God and reveals the fullness of truth because the, the fullness of the Spirit is given without reserve, we too 
have that possibility to be witnesses to the truth. Not just from because the apostles received it first hand, but we have that word of God who is alive and kicking still. As we read on Sunday, there were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. So that life that Jesus came to communicate, we can have by the reading of the apostles' witness, the word of God, scriptures. And we have Jesus here in the, in the, in the blessed sacrament, and he communicates his life to us through all the sacraments. So we too can be first-hand witnesses to this risen, risen life of God, the, the, the life, the new life that he communicates to us, and that's what we are called to do in the world in which we live. So we can ask our Heavenly Mother, she who always gave witness to the new life of God, working in her and through her, to help us that we too may be true witnesses of this new life in this world. Amen.